Hi everyone, I'm back to talk to you today about artists who use line in their work. So I'm going to go through um, a few examples using the different materials and different techniques. And I'd like to start off by introducing you to Happy Cats, who is actually one of my creations. And Happy Cats is an illustration um, inspired by um, cartoon cats such as Henry's Cat and Hello Kitty and Pusheen, things like that. Now it's quite simple um, to create a happy cat image. So I thought I'd just show you using the watercolours that you've got in your pack and also the Derwent line maker as well. So what I normally do is I create the shape of the cat simply using just a wash of the colour, the watercolour. So if I paint from the... Um, the side, I often paint happy cat dancing, happy cat loves to dance, so um, it's quite a sort of childlike um, imagery, very simple and I usually let that dry and then I will add in the detail so I have one that I prepared earlier in the Blue Peter style um, so do and line make a pen and then sort of add in the details and a happy cat has always got a smile on the face so big beam whiskers very simple quite sporadic line showing a bit of movement because they're having a bit of a boogie might want to show the swish of the tail as well so yeah, it's very simple shape and then black outline. So that's how you can use watercolour and then if you let it dry, it's nice that you can work back into it using the Derwent line maker. So here we have one of my favourite artists who's called Keith Haring. Um, unfortunately not with us anymore. He died quite young actually, so it might be worth spending some time um, maybe finding out about him and the, his, his background um, he was around in the 70s and early 80s um, so this poster design that he did you can see in the image um, is for animals and animal protection and he used to draw in very bold outline um, and bold flat colour so I've picked out the cat Obviously, you can see a theme occurring here. Um, and what I've done is I've used the colouring pencils out of your pack um, to create the shape, first of all. So I drew the outline. And then I've used the colouring pencils and putting on quite a lot of pressure to be able to get the bold, flat colour. Um, and I've been using the cross-hatching technique to layer it up. So that's how I've got the shape and the, the bold colour. And then um, we're going to use the permanent marker pen to create the heavy bold outline. So simply trace round the shapes that you've drawn. It's got a really nice effect, very smooth, bold lines to replicate that style of Keith Haring. So we've got the legs on there. Okay. So I quite like the uh, cartoon style, very simple stylized shapes that Keith Haring used in his work. There you go. So that's Keith Haring. Here I'm looking at a lovely pencil drawing by Manet. So this is a, a cat curled up sleeping. And I think it's a beautiful drawing. It's very simple the way that he's done it. You can see um, the zigzag lines that he's used. Um, so I've got my set of pencils here. And you can see how he's created the, um, the texture of the fur by creating these zigzags and they're all going in different directions and he's also 
put more pressure on in areas and less in others to um to show the tone as well so here on the face where it's cast a shadow that's a little bit closer together as well there and then a bit further apart in the lighter area so he's used his pencil in a variety of ways in di different directions um, it's really sensitively yeah, drawn it's really nice so you can try your sketching pencils and remember that you've got the grades um, on the actual pencil where it says the number the higher the number the softer the pencil is and you can get some really nice range of tone there so that's Manet so uh, Leonardo da Vinci um, was a lover of cats and I've been reading about today on the internet and he was said to if I just quote him he said the cat is nature's masterpiece and here you can see in this image here you can see that he's done lots of studies um, of a cat sort of in different different poses and this one is a, a close-up so this one allows you to see um, the different types of line that he used in his work and this one is a combination of material so he used pen and ink um, with wash over black chalk so what I've done is I've started off drawing the outline using the chalk so the chalk from the um, soft pastels pack and then I've started to work into that so you can actually use um, a little bit of water and you can look at say like the areas of tone so where the shadows are and you can actually paint um, quite nicely with, with the um, the chalk so it picks up some of the um, the chalk and then it moves it around for you to create those shadows that's really lovely that works really well I really like working like this with uh, mixed media and then you can use the Derwent line maker pen and actually um, drawing is used you know like lines and dashes so we were looking at mark making last time you can see where he's made use of those to accentuate like the, the curves in the cat's body and also like the fur as well to get the texture of the fur where it catches the light so I think that's a really nice way of working and it's definitely worth exploring the combinations of the materials to see what kind of effects you can create in your work so that's Leonardo da Vinci here I'm looking at a lovely pencil drawing by Manet this is a, a cat curled up sleeping and I think it's a beautiful drawing it's very simple the way that he's done it you can see um, the zigzag lines that he's used um, so I've got my set of pencils here and you can see how he's created the, um, the texture of the fur by creating these zigzags and they're all going in different directions and he's also put more pressure on in areas and less in others to, um, to show the tone as well so here on the face where it's cast a shadow that's a little bit closer together as well there and then a bit further apart in the lighter areas so he's used his pencil in a variety of ways in di different directions um, it's really sensitively yeah, drawn, it's really nice so you can try your sketching pencils and remember that you've got the grades um, on the actual pencil where it says the number the higher the number the softer the pencil is and you can get some really nice range of tone there so that's Manet here we have a Chinese artist and I'll be honest I'm not really sure how to pronounce their name but I thought this image was really beautiful so I wanted to share it with you um, so this time I thought we could use watercolour so they've used ink and washes but we can use the watercolour in a similar way um, so I've got the finest brush from the paintbrush set 
and really watered down if you use the the black plenty of water on and then you can actually create the really beautiful um, brush stroke marks that you can see in this painting just like this then you've also got the um, the fence in the background which is like a a very light wash of brown paint that in the different directions this is like the cross hatching technique which I showed you in the last video and then of course you've got the uh, the plants as well the leaves create those shapes if you wanted to work back into it with the the Derwent line maker as well to accentuate certain parts of it that would work as well I think but make sure um, that it's dry first so you can paint in like I did with Happy Cat very simple shapes of the plants very very light and then of course you've got the butterflies in the background there as well It looks like he's chasing butterflies. Yeah, keep it, just keep it very, very light. You can always work back into it when it's dry as well. Um, and sometimes I use a little bit of tissue if I put too much water on, and then I can dab it and then work back into it afterwards. Okay, so we have a beautiful Chinese painter. Perhaps if you look up his name you can or her name you could try and find out how to pronounce it. So this is a scene taken from a tomb in Egypt and it's been recreated by an artist called Charles K. Wilkinson. So he has used tempera on paper, which is a type of paint, but I thought it'd be quite nice for us to try out a combination of the soft pastels and the willow charcoal because I thought it'd be quite nice to get that really earthy looking effect um sometimes chalk pastels and the, like the softness the graininess of them carries that off quite well so what I've done is I've drawn the the background in the sort of beige rustic um color and then I've drawn in the basic shapes of the serpent and the cat and then I'm going to use the um, the willow charcoal over the top to see if that might be good um, for adding in the detail. So obviously you've got the markings on the body of the snake. So, it, you know, it seems to work quite well this way. And then, of course, you've got the other detail on the, um, the cat's body. I mean, you could try um, the watercolour as well um, to do this. Charcoal is quite brittle. Um, I just thought this might be quite quite a nice way to use the pastels and the um, willow charcoal together. But by all means, if you feel like the watercolour will be better, give that a go. Obviously, the Egyptians worshipped cats quite a prominent um, animal they used to draw in their the tombs in Egypt ok so oops it's very very brittle this so do be careful and obviously keep like I said um, if you have something next to you to protect the surface you're working on because um, it can get quite messy working with pastels and charcoal. Okay, so that's Charles K. Wilkinson. So this is the last example that I'm going to show you. This is another painting, an oil painting by Paul Klee. Um, this time I thought it would be quite nice to try out the oil pastels to recreate um, the same effects that Paul Klee's used in his work. So we've got quite muted colours here. Um, lots of blending going on 
and I started off with um, the brown just very lightly drawing the outline and then I started to work in the colours so you can see here I've, I've been layering up the, um, the red and the yellow and a bit of orange as well um, to get that muted appearance and there's quite a lot of texture going on here so as you layer them up and work into it it's a very sort of similar effect to the oil paint it's quite a nice effect so this is the last piece of art that we're going to look at today in the next video I'm going to talk to you about the next formal element um, which is tone so we're going to be focusing on the materials um, in creating a range of tone in your work so have your sketchbook and your materials at the ready for the next video and I'll see you soon